Hello everyone, my name is Gabriella, and you're welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Now today's topic is a delicious one. We're going to be discussing how the foods of Africa have influenced world cuisine. Now Africa is a vast continent with a rich cultural diversity. As such, it has a rich and diverse cuisine. However, some dishes might be found commonly across multi-ethnic groups existing in different regions. With almost 5,000 ethnic groups, it is hard to come across what we can call African food. Now, what is the atmosphere of African food? Eating in Africa goes beyond the meal itself. A couple of things make some meal times in Africa a very special experience. One of these things is ambience. When we look at the ambience, we're considering the kind of environmental setup that prevails during dinner time in most places in Africa. Traditionally, the following are some of the common features by which ambience makes a fine dinner in Africa. Another feature of the ambience of African food is eating meals by the fireside. In most parts of interior Africa, dinner is held by the fireside. The fire serves several purposes such as a source of light, a source of warmth, a source of deterrence against wild animals and insects, particularly mosquitoes, a central point for gathering, and a cultural symbol of unity. Another feature of the atmosphere of African food is togetherness. Food in Africa is not just a meal, but a social gathering. Food is used as a means of strengthening bonds. As such, eating food alone is considered bad manners. The following are some of the ways by which togetherness makes a fine dinner in Africa. One of this is stories. Unlike in other cultures where people have to stay quiet while eating, in most African cultures, a fine dinner is one that is escorted by sweet stories. Sharing dishes is another sign of the togetherness felt during African dinners. Sharing dishes such as plates, beer pots, and so on is pretty common. Also, visitors are not left out. A fine dinner in Africa is one where there's at least a guest who is receiving some good treatment during dinner time. The third feature of the atmosphere of African food is divinity. A fine dinner in Africa is one where divine intervention is sought and appreciated. It is customary not to just share meals with the living, but also with ancestors and spirits. The following divine activities make a unique dinner in Africa. Prayers. Prayers are always conducted before any given meal, more so dinner. Included in the prayers are thanks given to those who made the food, to God for the life that lives, and to the spirits and ancestors for protection. There are also prayers of blessing to the family and those who are partaking in the meal. It is also common to give some part of the meal to the ancestors. For example, amongst the Igbos of Eastern Nigeria, it's common to sprinkle a little bit of palm wine on the ground before consuming or offering it to guests. This is known as pouring libation. Now, what's food in Africa like? Africa is vast. Thus, the best way to look at African cuisine is on a regional basis. Traditionally, most African cuisines use a combination of local cereal grains, available fruits and vegetables, as well as meat and milk products. In some parts of Africa, the traditional diet features a preponderance of curd, fresh and healthy vegetables, whey, and milk products. Depending on the region of this continent, there are sometimes significant differences in the eating and drinking habits throughout Africa's many populations, namely the Horn of Africa, North Africa, Central Africa, East Africa, West Africa, and Southern Africa. All of these regions have their preparation techniques and distinctive dishes. Now let's take a look at the cuisine of Central Africa. Central Africa stretches from the Tibet Sea Mountains in the north to the vast rainforest basin of the Congo River, the highlands of Kivu, and the savannah of Katanga. This region has received the culinary influence of the Swahilis, which is a culture that evolved by the combination of Bantu, Yemeni, Omani, and Indian cultures during the East African slave trade. Swahili culinary influences can be found in dishes such as mandazi, pilaf rice, kachumbari, sambuka, 
kukupaka and so on. Central Africa has also been influenced by the cuisine of East, West and Southern African regions because of their proximity. For example, babute is shared with the South, inyama choma with the East and gombos with West Africa. The main ingredients are plantains, cassava, rice, kwanga, which is cassava, dumpling, and yam. Fufu-like starchy foods are usually made from fermented cassava roots, but they can also be made with plantain, corn, maize, and yam. Fufu is served buffet style with grilled meat, fish, stews, and greens. A variety of local ingredients are used while preparing other dishes like spinach stew cooked with tomato, peppers, chili, onions and peanut butter. Eastern Central Africa is also one of the few regions in Africa that uses potatoes as one of its main bases since potatoes grow so easily in the region. Cassava plants are also consumed as cooked greens. Groundnut stew is also prepared containing chicken, okra, ginger, and other spices. Another commonly served dish is bambara, which is a porridge of rice, peanut butter, and sugar. Chicken and fish are favorite meat dishes, but game meat preparations containing crocodile, elephant, antelope, and warthog are also served occasionally. Now on to East African cuisine. East Africa area is home to mainly Tanzania, Kenya, Burundi, Somalia and Somaliland, Rwanda, and of course, Uganda. Like most African foods, food in this area consists of dishes made from grains, rice, millet, yam, beans, and cow peas, flours for bread, including sorghum, maize, and stews cooked with meat and vegetables. East African breakfast would consist of special food with baked bread, which is, it could be a whole or chapati in Kenya and Uganda. Also in Uganda, there's a special dish called katogo. Katogo is commonly cooked as a combination of peeled bananas and peanuts or beef, though offa or goat meat are also common. Some of these specialties are usually served with different vegetable stews. One of the best East African specialties is kukupaka. It is a delicious food with chicken coconut curry, which is served with white rice or sometimes kambulo. Kambulo is made from cooked beans with butter and sugar and is usually served with rice and is so famous in East African cuisine. Fresh butter and fresh milk features in many authentic foods in East Africa. So do a variety of spices like cumin and coconut. Like foods from all over Africa, preparation time for some of these kinds of meals can take from anywhere from one to five hours per meal. Like uh, the dish we mentioned previously, kambulo, it's prepared from azuki beans and may take up to five hours to boil to attain the desired tenderness. Next is the Horn of Africa cuisine. The main traditional dishes in Eritrean cuisine and Ethiopian cuisine are something like all other foods from across the continent. Some of them are sebis or stews, which is served with injera. Now injera is cooked with flatbread made from sorghum or teff. Ethiopian and Eritrean cuisine, especially the northern half of those two places is very similar. Now, injera is pretty um, typical to these areas, to both um, Ethiopia and Eritrea. Injera is made out of a variation and blends of wheat, barley, teff, and sorghum, and it resembles a pancake. When eating injera, diners generally share food from a large tray placed in the center of a low dining table. Numerous injera is layered on this tray and topped with various spicy stews. Diners then break into the section of injera in front of them, tearing off pieces and dipping them into the stews. Now injera isn't eaten with utensils, rather it is used to scoop entrees from side pots and pans. Traditional Ethiopian cuisine has no pork or shellfish of any kind, as they are forbidden inside the Islamic Jewish and Ethiopian Orthodox faiths. It is also very common to eat from the same dish at the table with a small grouping of people. 
Rice is also a very common dish, the most famous probably being basmati. Spices including cumin, cardamom, clove, cinnamon, and sage are utilized to aromatize these distinct rice dishes. Now over to North African cuisine. North Africa lies along the Mediterranean Sea and encompasses within its fold several nations, including Morocco, Algeria, Libya, Tunisia, Egypt, and Sudan. The roots of North African cuisine can be traced back to the ancient empires of North Africa, particularly in Egypt, where many of the country's dishes and culinary traditions date back to African antiquity. Most of the North African countries have several similar dishes, sometimes almost the same dish with a different name. The Moroccan tangia and the Tunisian kucha are both essentially the same dish, which is a meat stew prepared in an urn and cooked overnight in a public oven, sometimes with a slight change in ingredients and cooking style. To add to the confusion, two completely different dishes may also share the same name. For example, a tangine dish is a slow-cooked stew in Morocco, whereas the Tunisian tangine is a baked omelette or a quiche-like dish. There are noticeable differences between the cooking styles of different nations, from the sophisticated, full-bodied flavors of Moroccan palace cookery to the fiery dishes of Tunisian cuisine and the humbler, simpler cuisines of Egypt and Algeria. Next, we have Southern African cuisine. The cooking of Southern Africa is sometimes called rainbow cuisine, as the food in this region is a blend of many cultures, indigenous African societies, European and Asian. People here were defined to some extent by the kinds of foods they ate. The Bantu speakers ate dishes of grain, meat, milk and vegetables, as well as fermented grain and fermented milk products, while the koi koi, which are koizen katuraras, ate meat and milk, and the san hunted wild animals and gathered wild tubers and vegetables. In many ways, the daily food of native South African families can be traced to the indigenous foods that their native African ancestors ate. The koizen ate roasted meat, and they also dried meat for later use. The influence of their diet is reflected in the universal Southern African love of barbecue, generally called in South Africa by its Afrikaans name abrai and biltong, which is dried preserved meat. The traditional beer was ubiquitous in the Southern African diet and fermentation added additional nutrients to the diet. It was a traditional obligation for any family to be able to offer a visitor copious amounts of beer. Beer brewing was done by women, and the status of a housewife in pre-colonial Southern Africa depended significantly on her skill at brewing delicious beer. The basic ingredients of Southern African food include seafood, meat products including wild game, poultry, as well as grains, fresh fruits and vegetables, fruits including apples, grapes, mangoes, bananas and papayas, avocados, oranges, peaches and apricots. Meat products include lamb and game like venison, ostrich and impala. The seafood includes crayfish, prawns, tuna, mussels, oysters, calamari, mackerel and lobster. There are also several types of traditional alcoholic beverages. Now, the last and certainly not the least, West African cuisine. A typical West African meal is made with starchy items and can contain meat, fish, as well as various spices and herbs. A wide array of staples are eaten across the region, including fufu, banku, kenke, originated from Ghana, futu, couscous and gari, which are served alongside soups and stews. Fufu is often made from starchy root vegetables such as yams, cocoa yams or cassava, but can also be made from cereal grains like millet, sorghum or plantains. The local cuisine and recipes of West Africa continue to remain deeply entrenched in the local customs and traditions, with ingredients like native rice, fornio, millet, sorghum, bambara groundnuts, hausa groundnuts, 
black eyed peas, brown beans, and root vegetables such as yams, cocoa yams, sweet potatoes, and cassava. Cooking techniques include roasting, baking, boiling, frying, mashing, and spicing. A range of sweets and savouries are also prepared. Flaked and dried fish is often fried in oil and sometimes cooked in a sauce made up of hot peppers, onions, tomatoes, and various spices such as sumbwala and water to prepare a highly flavored stew. In some areas, beef and mutton are preferred and goat meat is the dominant red meat. Suya, which originated from northern Nigeria, is a popular grilled spicy meat kebab flavored with peanuts and other spices and is sold by street vendors as a snack or evening meal and is typically made with beef or chicken. It is common to have a preponderance of seafood and is sometimes also mixed with other meat products. Guinefowl eggs, eggs and chicken are also preferred. With regard to beverages, water has a very strong ritual significance in many West African nations, particularly in dry areas. And water is often the first thing an African host will offer his or her guest. Palm wine is also a common beverage made from fermented sap of various types of palm trees and is usually sold in the sweet, which is a less fermented option, or the saw, which has been fermented longer, making it stronger and less sweet. Now let's take a look at African influence in world cuisine. Firstly, in America. The slave trade brought approximately half a million Africans to the United States. These people arrived stripped of their material possessions, but possessed a distinctive cultural heritage and various talents and skills. Some historians say that the addition of such vitamin and mineral rich food plants saved white slaveholders from nutritional deficiencies. The diet in some parts of Africa was centered around stews served over a starchy base such as rice or fufu, which is a pounded mass of boiled yams, cassava, or millet. The effect of this food habit is today especially evident in Louisiana-style cookery, in which chicken or seafood is served with a sauce over a bed of rice. Cajun dishes such as gumbo and jambalaya also demonstrate the African hand. Most times, Africans pass through the way station of the West Indies. Here, the Creole Islander's spicy cuisine might add inspiration and unwritten recipes to the African cook's repertoire. Soon, Southland plantation families were enjoying black creations of pot liquor and sweet potato puddings and experiencing somewhat different cooking techniques. For Africans were fond of deep fat frying and grilling. Thanks also to black influence, certain foods were introduced to America or utilized to a greater extent. Black eyed peas, hominy grits, okra, eggplant, sesame seed, sorghum, and melons were emphasized by cooks of African origin. A satisfying southern soul food style menu of this age featuring fried chicken, sweet potatoes, black eyed peas, turnip greens, cornbread and sweet potato pie is a direct outgrowth of African cooking. Now let's take a look at coffee in Southern America. Many people associate coffee with Southern America but Ethiopia is the birthplace of the world's premier coffee, writes Judith Carney in her book, In the Shadow of Slavery, Africa's Botanical Legacy in the Atlantic World. Legend has it that a goat herder named Calbi discovered it when his herd became particularly boisterous after eating berries from a tree. Whether that is true or not, how to take a coffee bean, know when and how to roast it, and turn it into a delicious beverage involved a deep cultural knowledge system of growing and brewing varieties from the Ethiopian highlands where it originated, says Carney. When Europeans reached East Africa, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and the Emirates in the 16th century, they encountered coffee houses and culture around the drink. But given the racial prejudice against Africans honed during the transatlantic slave trade and the fact that coffee had become so central to Muslim culture, Europeans attributed the art of making the drink and profusion of coffee houses to Muslim societies. Carney says in her book, 
The popular image of Africa today is of a hungry continent. Yet it's because of African crops and slaves agricultural practices that we eat what and how we do in America. Now we're looking at African influence on the cuisine of Mexico. So Mexican dishes are made with ingredients that were brought from Africa to Mexico. These include rice, plantains, coffee, tamarind, as well as sesame seeds used in papianis. Even watermelons and yams came from Africa. Many people do not know about the African influence in Mexico. An article by the University of California lets us know that the second president of the Mexican Republic, Vincent Guerrero, was of mixed African descent. Then, Mexico was known as New Spain and was a key port of entry for slave ships. Eventually, they assimilated into the Mexican cultures, blending their food and way of cooking. Like America, the blending of cultural influences creates a rich array of foods that become favorites of the people and a rich part of the country's heritage. One of the foods they brought to Mexico was the humble peanut. Though not original to Africa, it was brought to Mexico by Africans. They used peanuts in meat stews, vegetable and fish dishes, and in pastes. Often peanuts were mixed with onions and chilies to form a sauce-like salsa. These sauces are used for chicken and pork. Peanuts are also used in desserts, drinks, ices, and ice cream. Africans also brought plantains, which are used to make dough for gorditas, tortillas, and empanadas. But it doesn't stop there. Africa also introduced tropical roots like the yuca, malanga, taro, and sweet potato to Mexico. They were cheap and easy to grow. They were used in garlic and tomato sauces, dessert fritters, and sweet tamales. Sometimes they combined the roots with fruits like coconut and pineapple for desserts. Finally, let's take a look at Brazil. Acaraje is a type of fritter made from cow peas. It is the most popular street food in the northeastern state of Bahia in Brazil. The recipe for acaraje was introduced to Bahia by slaves who came from Yorubaland during the colonial period. In Nigeria, acaraje is named acara, and the women who sell it call out acaraje, which means come and eat acara in Yoruba. It is also popular among Sierra Leoneans. In Ghana, it is a popular breakfast dish eaten with millet or corn, while in Nigeria, it is eaten with bread, ogi, or eko, which is a type of cornmeal made with fine corn flour. Akara is made from peeled beans, formed into a ball, and then deep fried in palm oil or vegetable oil. Although the basic ingredients are the same, they are variations to suit specific tastes. Akaraje is made with cooked and mashed black eyed peas, seasoned with salt and chopped onions, molded into the shape of a large scone, and deep fried in palm oil in a wok like pan in front of the customers, stuffed with spicy paste made from shrimp, ground cashews, palm oil, and other ingredients. In Brazil, Akaraje serves as both a religious offering to the gods in the Candomblé religion and as street food. As an essential ritual food using Afro-Brazilian religious traditions such as candomblé, it is offered to the Orisha Eshu. They vary in size based on their offering to, the, to a specific deity. Large round akaraje are offered to Songo. Smaller ones in form are offered to Iyansa. Small fritter sized akaraje are offered to heiress or child spirits. Now, Akaraje is used in candomblé rituals in the states of Bahia, Rio de Janeiro, and Pernambuco. Akaraje was listed as a federal immaterial asset by the National Institute of Historic and Artistic Heritage in 2004. The role of Bayanas, these are the women who prepare Akaraje, was also recognized in the same act. Africa has contributed so much to the world's cuisine as we know it today. From rich and savory spices to the introduction of certain foods, Africa's impact cannot be overlooked. The vastness and diversity of African dishes are just like the continent itself. Each part of the continent brings its delicious uniqueness that is untasted anywhere else. 
I hope you found this interesting and informative. Please give us a thumbs up, share this video with your contacts, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. Hi, welcome back to another episode of Sankofa.